In this first video, we are going to use some neat modeling techniques to create a frame guide that connects this vertical pillar to the linear guides on part of the CNC machine. Using an existing selection set, we can isolate just the parts we need to work with. It is good modeling practice to create your parts as components. If you ever think you will need to show how parts interact or how they will move, they need to be components. Let's call this component Frame Guide. After creating a sketch, we want to use the existing geometry to help us define our design. Using the P key for Project, we can project the current geometry onto our sketch plane. We want to project this intersection right here, but geometry is in front of it, making it difficult to select. If we hold down the left mouse button for a moment, Fusion 360 brings up a selection list that allows us to select entities that are covered by other entities. Now that we have projected the geometry, we can use it to create a rectangle that will be located in the correct spot. Also, notice that we can hover over geometry and it will create a snap guide that helps align the rectangle to existing geometry. Let's extrude to the back face of the pillar. Clicking on the back face snaps the distance to that location. A great way to differentiate your component from other components is to use Component Color Swatch. You can activate this toggle under the Inspect menu. Now that we have the basic shape of the frame guide, we can start shaping it to fit our needs. For example, let's chamfer this corner of the block to remove extra material weight. We will use the chamfer command to do this. However, we want the chamfer to go a certain distance. To do this, we will use the Measure option in the Distance dialog and select the two faces we want to measure. Let's pre-select this edge and create a large fillet. Another handy tip is to use the Marking menu to drag straight up to repeat the last command. This is called a gesture. By right clicking and dragging up, Fusion 360 will repeat the last command you just completed, in this case the fillet command. We don't need to see the vertical tube for a while, so we will turn it off. By just selecting a face on the tube, you can right mouse click and select show or hide. Looking at the part, we can see that it is clashing with the linear guides. Let's use the press pull command and specify a new offset. By clicking on the face of the linear guide, it will snap to that face. The next thing we want to do is remove more weight from our component. To do this, we will use the shell command. However, we don't want to shell all the way through the part, so we're going to split the body in half. To do this, we need to create a mid-plane construction plane. Instead of trying to find it in the menu, we can press the S key and start typing in mid-plane. This brings up the context toolbox. Notice midplane shows up and we can even run the command from the dialog. We will use this new construction plane to split our component in half. There may be times where you want to specify a variable multiple times, like a specific distance and you don't want to have to type it in each and every time. 
This is where a user variable comes into play. Let's create a user variable called rib thickness that we can use. We will set it to 0 0.1875 inches. Now when we shell this front face and it asks for a shell thickness, we can start typing in rib thickness and you see that it shows up as an expression. Now the wall thickness of the shell is set to whatever rib thickness is set to. And if we change the rib thickness variable, our shell distance will update also. We want to combine the split parts back together. Notice by splitting the part, we were able to control how deep the shell went into the part. Now that this whole area is shelled out, we want to create some strengthening webs using the web command. This command takes simple sketch geometry and creates automatic strengthening webs. So, to start, we need to create a sketch with some profile lines. Let's project a few lines off of the upright tube. We'll use the S key again to search for offset. Next, we need to offset these lines to specify the center line of the webs. We can use a formula in the offset distance by entering rib thickness divided by 2. We'll add a few more lines to help define where we want these webs to appear. Now we can use the web command to select our sketch profile and have it automatically create these webs. We'll use the user variable to specify the web thickness. You can see how the web command automatically extended the profile lines. So, we are starting to get the shape that we want, but there is a lot of material at the base of the part that we could probably remove. Let's chamfer this bottom edge. Notice that it selected the whole chain of edges, so we can just turn off the chain and reselect that edge. A 45 degree chamfer doesn't give us the result we want, so let's do a two distance chamfer. We'll start with a one inch chamfer for the depth, but we need to measure the distance for the height. Again, we'll use the measure command in the distance dialog to accomplish this. Now we want to work on the area where the upright tube connects with our component. We will use the information from the upright tube to help us modify our component by using the combine cut command. Notice that it cut the shape of the upright tube out of our component, but that it left some extra geometry. This is where the direct modeling functionality of Fusion 360 is really great. We can just select the faces we want to remove and hit the delete key on the keyboard. You can also select the geometry you want to remove and use the marking menu to select delete. Finally, we want to create some fillets on the internal webs because having sharp edges would be difficult and expensive to manufacture.
there's a great command called rule fillet that creates fillets according to the rules that you specify. In this case, we want to specify a fillet of 0.25 on all edges created by the web feature. When we select the web feature in the timeline, notice how all the edges related to the web feature are selected. Some of the edges related to the shell were not selected, so we can do another rule fillet and select the bottom faces of the shell. In this video, you got to see some great Fusion 360 functionality, such as projected geometry, measured chamfers, selection lists, marking menu gestures, the S key dialog box, user variables, webs, direct modeling, and rule fillets. In the next video, we will continue modeling and modifying our frame guide component.